It was back to the practice field for the first time Monday for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Not a single soul had worked out since Alabama beat Auburn 42-14 back on November 26th. Nick Ronnie Duncan here with your sports. You know, I've got the latest on Gus Malzahn. He's going to be leaving, and a few of Alabama's top players are now All-Americans. Friday Duncan here with your sports. You know, Gene Chizik is going to be interviewing a whole lot of folks who think they can be offensive coordinator for the Auburn Tigers. However, you knew it was going to happen sooner or later in Tuesday night. Gus Malzahn accepted the job at Arkansas State to become their new head coach. And today, the man who has been at the helm of the Auburn Tigers the past three seasons finally paid off. You know, he's been in high demand. So he's coming home to Arkansas, where he was a high school coaching legend. And now he gets a chance to be the head coach on the college level at Arkansas State. Although Gus will be taking a little pay cut. You know, he made $1.3 million at Auburn. He'll make $850,000 at Arkansas State. But he gets a new house, and it's a gated community. And he signed on Wednesday. He's a happy man because, like Dorothy said, in The Wizard of Oz, there is no place like home. So click your heels for these achievements. As you can see, Gus, man, while he was the offensive coordinator, broke all kind of records. Look what he did in 2010, over 6,989 yards in total offense. He was the Frank Bowles winner in 2010 for the top assistant. And of course, you know he coached Cam Newton and the Auburn Tigers to that national championship quarterback coach, offensive coordinator. We caught up with him today. Gus is one happy man. Talk about it, Gus. I'm one of those guys that I've always let the Lord lead and guide my career. And a lot of it's made sense, not made sense. I'm not a normal college coach as far as the progression goes and uh, so I always look for the right place and the right time well guess what this is the right place and the right time all right it was the right place and the right time for the Alabama Crimson Tide that's because the Tide along with LSU dominated the Associated Press All-America team as expected Trent Richardson was a first team selection he was joined by Barrett Jones and linebacker Dante Hightower and safety Mark Barron and linebacker Courtney Upshaw and cornerback Drake Kilpatrick. They all made the team giving Alabama the most players represented overall. Hey, the 4-1 Auburn Tigers basketball team, they took to the court tonight, taking on South Florida, and the fellows were pretty excited because the ladies beat South Florida earlier. Auburn was down 9-2. Kenny Gabriel with the steal passes to Chris Denson, and the comeback is on. Under two minutes to go in the half, Perez Ward. Watch him here. Drain the three in my face. That's your face from out of space. And how about Frankie Sullivan with the big show? All of you old timers are meaning Ed Sullivan. Watch Frankie going to the hoop, scoop, and it's good. Auburn led 45-32 with a little more than six minutes left to go in the second half. People familiar with the deal say the Hornets have agreed in principle to deal Chris Paul to Los Angeles. That's right. He's going to be going. Eric Gordon's going to be coming this way along with Chris Kamen and other draft picks. And now it's time for a Ford Slam Duncan play of the day. And this is why you should never turn your back. Mississippi State taking on Florida Atlantic. D boss. Uh oh. He got you. Raymond Taylor. You slick little fella. Watch this. It's a high one. He gets it and it's good. I'm Roddy Duncan. Three to the one. It was all fun. Hey, the Tennessee Titans just became the answer to an infamous trivia question for 2011 in the NFL. The question is, who was the first team to lose to the Indianapolis Colts? Well, the Colts are no longer winless. That's because Dan Orslowski threw one touchdown pass. He had a key block on an 80-yard touchdown run, leading the Colts to their first win of the season, 27-13 over Tennessee on Sunday. Indianapolis is now 1-13, but they avoided becoming the second team in NFL history to go 0-16. The Green Bay Packers' perfect season came crashing down Sunday. That's because Kansas City behind their interim new head coach, Romeo Cornell, and their new quarterback, Kyle Orton, put on a shocking 19-14 performance in a victory. Orton finished 23-31, 299 yards, and his first start. Get that ball, young man, for the Chiefs. Cam Newton, who threw two touchdown passes as the Carolina Panthers ended the Houston, Texas seven-game winning streak. Stevie Smith, you got it, inbounds, and I love the dance afterwards. By the way, Carolina won the game 28-13. The Texans got it done. 
They got beat up because Cam completed 13 of 23 passes for 149 yards. Carolina Panthers beating up on the Texans. You know, there's a new player in town when it comes to high school sports in Madison City, especially the Valley. They're building what they think will be the sports powerhouse that's going to give Bob Jones a little competition. Glenn James Clemens High is going to be the school of higher learning, but a threat to Bob Jones. Forget about the monopoly on the good athletes and Madison City, which has one of the fastest growing areas in the state. Tuesday morning, they introduced Bill Stewart as their new athletic director and hit football coach, and he's ready to get on the job. And I look forward to seeing everybody. Uh, it's an exciting time for everybody. I think it's an exciting time for Madison City um, as far as uh, what's going to go on here. So uh, just excited to be a part of it. And uh, I'm glad that uh, they let me be a part of this venture. And so uh, really appreciate the time here. Hey man, we're going to appreciate your time, too. Last night, Bob Jones, the girls, they avenged their only loss of the season, beating arch rival Hoover 36-34. Who is that mass lady? She's a superstar. She's Jasmine Jones, simply the best high school basketball player in the state for the girls. She had 15 points. She was the difference in the game as Bob Jones moves to eight and one. Their head coach talked about it afterward. It was a hard fort victory. Well, you know, Jasmine coming back, you know, this game really helped us out on the boards. You know, controlling the boards against Hoover is vital because they got such size. You know, you know, with Katie Colson and Tierra Jones, and Jasmine controlling the board tonight. You know, we, we got a chance to win. We hit a few buckets tonight, and we're lucky to hit one more bucket tonight, and they did. How about that? It is official now. Jim McElwain is now the new head football coach at Colorado State. The man who has been the offensive coordinator and genius for Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide got a hero's welcome as he was officially announced today as the Rams' new football coach. He says the future looks bright at Colorado State. You know, I just want to say, start this by saying what a great honor and privilege it is to be associated with such a great university, a university that, that we know of throughout the Northwest and throughout the Rocky Mountain region as being one of the finest academic institutions there are out there. And now it's time for tonight's Taco Bell Slam Dunkin' Play of the Day. This is what you can expect to see at the Teddy Bear promotion the Havoc will be doing in their game this weekend. The scene was in Utica, New York, and the fans were throwing teddy bears onto the ice after the team's first goal. You need to get yourself a new teddy bear, put it in a plastic bag, and just let that sucker go. Throw it onto the ice at the Von Braun Center Saturday. The Havoc will be taking on Louisiana. Teddy Bear, Yogi, hey, hey, boo boo, I'm Roddy Duncan. Boo hoo. It was back to the practice field for the first time Monday for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Not a single soul had worked out since Alabama beat Auburn 42 14 back on November 26. Nick Saban began his journey and that plan for LSU with the first of five straight days of practice. You can expect to see the best in preparation as Bama gets ready for his much awaited rematch with LSU. Aaron Dacey and yours truly will be your eyes and ears at the BCS National Championship game in New Orleans. Live coverage begins January 4th. So stay tuned to Way 31 for all of your BCS information and updates. Or go to our website at waytv.com. Tune in live for our reports live from the Superdome coming soon. The Auburn Tigers, they still have plenty of bite as they get ready for Virginia in the Chick-fil-A Bowl in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome on New Year's Eve. The big question is who will be the starting quarterback because Kyle Frazier as well as Clint Mosley have been running neck and neck for that top spot. Some might think it could be a problem in the future with a new offensive coordinator coming on staff well after the game because the question is whether or not Auburn is looking for someone with the same characteristics that's Gus Malzahn, who's going to Arkansas State. We talked to head coach Gene Chizik about that. Back, so, uh, you know, whatever offense we decide to go to, uh, whatever that might be, um, we'll obviously uh, work around what our personnel uh, dictates we can do. And, and so that'll always be the case. No matter what offense or what defense you're running, uh, you've got to, you know, you've got to be able to, um, you know, work with what you have. How about that?
After a sensational 2011 in which Huntsville's Craig Kimball was named the National League Rookie of the Year with the Atlanta Braves, he's excited about 2012. Recently, I asked him about losing and going to the postseason and not seeing it, at least seeing it on TV, because St. Louis, the team that beat them out, went on to win the World Series. Did it feel good because it was St. Louis winning? I wouldn't say it's, it's better to lose than anybody because, you know, you hate losing. But um, to, watching them play towards the end of the year, you could tell that they were definitely one of the hotter teams in baseball. And, um, you know, it, it, once they made the, made the playoffs, you know, I, I said that, you know, they're, they're really hot and they hit the ball well. They, they have a chance to, to go a long ways, and, and they did. Um, you know, hats off to them. You know, you don't, you don't win the season um, in March. You win the season in September and take it into the playoffs. And whoever's hottest at the end of the year, um, you know, usually wins the World Series, just like the Giants did the year before. And uh, it's not how you start the season, it's how you finish it. How about that? Now it's time for a Taco Bell Slam Dunkin' Play of the Day. This was part of the halftime show of the Denver Broncos game. A monkey taking a ride on a dog. I'll just let the pitchers do the talking. I can tell you this, I wouldn't try it. I'm Ronnie Duncan, that's sports. I'll ABC you later. I love that music. Slam Duncan here with your sports. You know it's been a tremendous off-season and postseason for Huntsville's own Craig Kimball. You know the former star at Lee High School named the National League's Rookie of the Year? Well, take a look at this. This young man got his number retired. We're happy for him. He came back home. Hometown hero makes good. Folks came. I'm talking about his family, his friends, past students, past teachers. It was all good. He said he couldn't believe the honor that made Craig Kimball part of Huntsville all over again. Overwhelming, really. Uh, I never thought I'd ever have my number retired for any reason. Um, you know, when, uh, when Coach Weaver told me, I was, I was thrilled and um, you know, I'm just very grateful. Just uh, surprised. Uh, you know, I, I wore that number for three years and wore it proudly. And, I guess now it gets to hang, gets to hang up for people to see. Uh, it sounds kind of weird to me. Uh, still, still not used to having things like this happen. It's a good thing to happen to you, and it was a good thing for Florence native Josh Willingham, because today he and the Minnesota Twins have agreed to a new three-year, get this, twenty-one million dollar contract. Deal was announced shortly after Willingham passed the physical. The 32-year-old batted just 246. But he had a career high 29 homers and 98 runs batted in for the Oakland Athletics last season. Congratulations, Mr. Willingham. Hey, the Lady Bulldogs of Alabama AM. They played a matinee with the University of Alabama Birmingham. The ladies up on the hill lost that game 57 to 46, despite 20 points from their leading scorer, Wakita Tobar. They're now 4 and 3. Also on the season, it was a good one for Jasmine Hammond. Yes, he had 19 points. University of Alabama Huntsville Chargers won Thursday night. They upped their record to 7-1. and one. And now it's time for a Ford Slam Dunkin' Play of the Day. If you missed it earlier, got to show it to you twice. It's just that nice. Deuce Bello from Bello with the Windmill Slam. That's a jam, honey. I'm coming home. Three, two to one. It was all fun.